Welcome back to Extra Shot, a very challenging first session to kickstart day two of the DSP Leaders World Summit 2023. I'm joined, joined right now by uh, Stephen uh, Spellacy. Stephen is Vice President of Marketing and Enablement, Service Provider and Edge Business Unit at VMware. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. And Robert Curran, who is Consulting Analyst at Apple Door. Thank you so much for being with us today. So like I've said, a very challenging first session. How can we organize ourselves as an industry um, to deliver this vision, this model of the AI native telco? Stephen. It, it's exciting to see such enthusiasm about this topic. Um, I come from this industry as well with respect to software and AI. Um, to, to hear one side of the spectrum say, you know, we need to figure out the problem first and the other side experiment, basically. Let's just dive in and take advantage of what we know today and start working through the issues. And don't worry about the frameworks. Frameworks will follow once we've really figured out how to use the technology and apply it to the domain. And this is really the best practice. Um, frameworks can, in many ways, uh, burden the, the, the domain itself. You get caught up in the definition and you get further away from the solution. Interesting. Robert. Yeah, I think uh, I think Stephen makes a good point, uh, and we've heard some of that in the panel today. There's a tremendous appetite to to move on, to do something. Uh, telecom has a, a terrific history in in pursuing standards and standardization, and that's relevant for your you know interoperability when you're trying to get things to work together. That's the different problem set than we have right now. When we're talking about things like AI, uh, it, it's clearly a huge opportunity to to experiment, try things out. Uh, make mistakes along the way, but to, to you know, accelerate the, the, the progress of, uh, of development. And, and I think, to your question, uh, you know, sharing that experience as much as possible is another, you know, it's a huge change in, in our industry. Um, you know, telecom has often been quite secretive in its, uh, in its development innovation. And so I think what we're seeing I'm now, partly a result of you know, influence from IT and, and just a, a general change, uh, is much more openness, much more engagement, you know, people willing to come along and say, here's what we're trying, um, you know, here are things we need help with, here are things that we don't know. Um, and the more that the industry can learn together at the same time, I think uh, will definitely help, you know, help to uh, accelerate progress. I think you're right, time is crucial here, isn't it? It uh, is. The need for speed is, is the priority here. Uh, the, the industry is very organized generally, isn't it? But you can't spend too much time defining standards, right. defining the right framework, etc. So how can we accelerate this transformation and this adoption of AI? What would be good first steps? I think there are some low-hanging fruits within telco itself. I mean, look at the care organization, for instance, customer care. It was mentioned many times about understanding customer behaviors and interests in order to improve products and services. There's a plethora of natural language content that gets captured in care tickets and interactions with customers. That can be processed very easily through AI models that understand conversational AI and things like that that can be used to um, better understand the sentiment of a subscriber. Uh, think of this in the context of avoiding potential churn rates, you know, lowering churn rates and, and avoiding churn altogether. Um, also driving up NPS, as was mentioned on stage. These are very low hanging because they have captured this information, they can parse and process this information through some very standard um, tools that are available today that use AI in the foundation of how they operate. There's one benefit right away. Robert, as a consulting analyst, what would be your recommendations? How would you go about it? Um, yeah, I think um, do things that get results. You know, um, there's a, a need for a vision and a strategy, and that's that's a, that's a given. Um, but in the in the near term, you know, any kind of technology development, people need to see that there's a, that there's a quick win available. Uh, and particularly for AI, we need familiarity with you know with, with the whole deployment process. I think one of the things mentioned today comes up you know so often is is data. You know, AI depends on having data, lots of data. So you know, look to where you already have lots of data. And the, the good news is there's a huge amount of data in, in, in customer systems, huge amount of data coming off the network. So you know, telcos do have you know, the, the, the raw material that AI needs you know, uh, fed with. So I think that's the, uh, you know, that, that's the, the, the ways forward. I think the conversations about getting to a, you know, a cloud native mindset, and that, that will take time and that will come, but it starts with people having building, building blocks from a business case point of view and from a technology point of view, being familiar with you know with with how the lifecycle looks 
you know, how to get data, the different governance rules that apply as you start to you know, open out accessibility for data you know, across your organization. These are quite challenging you know, changes for telco. Um, but it's the right way to do it, step by step for sure, but towards you know, a very visionary and, and uh, ambitious end goal. Thank you very much, Robert. You guys are staying here, okay? We're just going to move across the room to join Yanni, who's by the coffee van. So what's happening over there, Yanni? Welcome back to Extra Shot. I hope you had a nice break. Um, prior to the break, we discussed uh, the first session of the day about how to create a framework for the AI native telco. Our guests today, still with us, uh, Stephen um, Spelossi, who is Vice President of Marketing and Enablement, Service Provider and Edge Business Unit at VMware, and Robert Curran, who is Consulting Analyst at Apple Door. Thank you for staying with us. Um, before the break, we talked about the importance not to waste too much time trying to agree on the right framework or standardization and to just basically uh, accelerate uh, the move to, to AI and, and AI environment and try new things. And then we talked about the importance with Alexandra Foster of BT, the importance of skills. So to which extent uh, does the industry need to upskill, reskill in order to uh, complete and deliver this vision of becoming uh, an AI native telco environment? Well, telco professionals should absolutely jump in head first and learn about AI. I think it's imperative that they start experimenting and understanding the technologies. There's a, a plethora of course material, both free and for uh, paid that they can take advantage of, even courses online, which they can learn and experiment with the technologies. The tools themselves, like chat, GPT, and, and other AI, uh, generative AI technologies are available for free use online. Many of them do come with some training intact. Um, but it is important that when professionals start experimenting with the technology, they be careful about what kind of content they actually put in to train the models. Um, there have been some high profile incidences of companies actually adding their own intellectual property into the models in the public instance, which can actually cause issues of IP leakage and, and, and right, uh, rights around their own individual IP. So that would be my only caution, is they do learn to experiment and start to take advantage of these capabilities and gain these new skills, that they be cautious about how they get that, that AI model uh, to operate with the data that they choose to uh, exercise. Robert, your thoughts? Uh, yes, completely agree with that. Uh, interestingly, one of the um, you know, leading figures in our industry um, from Telefonica, Enrique Blanco, uh, had an award recently and he referred to the need for continuous learning in his acceptance uh, speech. Um, and I think that's, that's just part of what our industry is. You know, we're constantly pushing back barriers on technology. It's, it's incumbent on all of us to, to learn. Uh, and this particular area, AI, is such a new skill set. Um, that uh, Stephen says there's lots of online training courses uh, available and it's quite an easy thing to get into. Just, you can learn as much as you want to, um, but it's, it certainly there's a lot of knowledge uh, already available there. Uh, I think Stephen raised a good point about, about the difference between theory and practice. Um, so, you know, having for companies, having some degree of guardrails around how people are being, uh, you know, educated. Um, you know, definitely need that, uh, need that in place, um, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all there for the taking, really. I have to ask you, personally, how confident or fluent do you feel in AI currently? Have you had to upskill a lot to uh, keep up to date with the latest developments? I, personally, uh, coming from a background in software technology and, and specifically this area of telco and the dom domain, I led product management for a startup that was focused on AI and automation. So I personally understand the concepts very well. It's, I'm not a developer, I'm a product marketer and a product manager by, by training. However, um, you know, immersing yourself with the nomenclature, understanding the basics of what the technology is capable of, that's just what everyone can do. You know, you know you don't need to be an expert. But I will say one important thing, you have to experiment now because those who uh, refrain from uh, taking advantage of AI, they'll be left in the dust. And if effectively, um, you want to think of it in two different ways. Um, those who understand AI and those who do not understand AI. 
Those who do not understand AI will be owned by the AI. Those who do understand AI will own the AI. And that's the outcome that most in, in this room should take. Uh, they sh that's the mindset that most in this room should, should start to take advantage of. Learn, immerse, and then take advantage of the capabilities. Eventually, bring that into your operation and make use of this. Thank you very much. Sobering thoughts, really, yes. when you think about it. Robert. <laughs> I, there's, there's always more to learn, uh, so I, I wouldn't want to put myself anywhere on, on that scale. There's, there's always always plenty to uh, to learn. Um, as I say, it, it's a, it is a topic you can get into. Uh, you know, you can learn the the basics. Uh, Stephen's saying you know the basic concepts, uh, and, and go from there. So uh, so yeah. And the other thing is, it's a it's a huge space. AI is lots and lots of different things. And as some of us coming up in the panel today, it, it's it, applying that uh, into a particular domain. So you know, AI it is just a tool. The question is, how do you apply it, and what context do you apply it? And so the power comes when when you combine the knowledge of how to use the tool with the knowledge of a, of a problem space. Uh, and our telecom has lots of domains of, of problems and challenges uh, that, that could benefit from application of AI. So we have about one minute before we need to wrap up and move on to the next session of the day. But very briefly, have you been at the DSB Leaders uh, World Forum before? And if not, will you be coming back? My first time in person, I've been a part of some of the other events and very impressed. And I will definitely be back. Thank you very much, Stephen. I certainly concur, concur with that. It's, it's been a really excellent event, uh, lots of time and space, lots of time to chat uh, and hear some really interesting insights from people. So yeah, we're certainly Wonderful. Back. Brilliant. Well, we hope to see you again. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Stephen and Robert. So we're moving on to the next session of day two of the DSB Leaders World Forum. And it's titled, Why Cloud Native is Essential to Delivering the Automation, Agility and Innovation Needed to Support New Services. So over to Guy and Arnaud Van Paris with CTIO Europe at Orange. <laughs>